of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for carving out time to be here uh, for, for this. I think it's important that we get together this one more time, hopefully the last time, and we can get this uh, straightened out. Um, the city of Hayes, in, in good faith, depends on both of you to the fullest, and we need to resolve something. We want to resolve this. We don't want this to go on any further. We want uh, projects down the road. We want you guys bidding on projects and working with them and, and them continuing to support us and vice versa. So let's, as much as we can, uh, we need to, I think, have some give and take and figure this out. <coughs> so um, I'm going to start with more um, to have Jared. Go ahead and just start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You kind of heard a lot of this other night. It's just kind of a continuation of the discussion. Um, you know, really where we're sitting at is um, we have a quantity of patching that was done, and it's 189,000 bucks with the. Um, this, this really isn't about the quality of the work. They've done a good job. The, the work they've done in town is good. You're going to get a good finished product. This is about money. So it's all about the patching. In those areas, it's one hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars. We're questioning, you know, the you know, whether it should be paid for or not based on the specification. The specification clearly said it should have been done within a certain time period, and it wasn't. Contractors made a lot of good points that um, they believe the work needed to be done anyways. Um, in some cases, they're probably not wrong, but it's impossible to to say for sure. Um, because the work was done outside of the spec. So um, that's a lot of the stuff that they argued the other night. And I guess um, I, while I definitely dispute a lot of things that they said, they're, they're not wrong in some cases. So I guess I'm, I'm hopeful that I agree that we can find some common ground here and um, do what's right and I guess pay what's fair. So. I, I guess uh, if you guys have anything more to add right away, or if we want to, we can we can go through the the specs and we can go through photos. We can do whatever you want to do at this point. Um, I'm prepared to talk about the the specs and the patches in specific areas, but you know I I didn't have anything else prepared at this moment to start off with. I guess. Well, I, I listened to the conversation the other evening, and you, you had commented that this DOT spec uh, is designed maybe not for the application that was it was used for here within the city. And, and while I, 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 I can't dispute that, that is the way that the contract was was written up and, and signed by, by the parties involved in the in the project here. So. I guess when push comes to shove, Pat's not here to, to, to support this. That's, that's what's contractually put together. Um, but at, at the same time, uh, we all recognize that, that there is there's value to, to the work that was, was done out there, that the, the patching created a, a situation for us to where those particular streets are going to last longer than they would have otherwise. Um, I can't. I, I, I can't say that I'm an expert in saying, you know, these these streets, by virtue of them being exposed longer, whether or not prior to that five exceeding the five days, they they needed it or didn't need it. I, I'm not going to dispute that. But there's there's no question in my mind that, you know, as as time continued to progress. I saw more and more. You you talked about you know you take a little thing like that you keep driving over it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know I don't know from a practicality standpoint how much of that would have been patched if we would have done it four days into the project versus thirty days into the project like some of the areas were. were. So so where am I going with all this blabbering? I I like the idea that. 
we come to kind of a mid mid point here to where we we understand that yes we can't go back now and scientifically prove one way or the other because it's it's after the fact here but I feel like there's there's some reasonability there that the longer that was exposed there was more damage that was happening and I'm not convinced that maybe as much patching would have happened if, if we would have gone after it in, in, a, in an earlier period. I'm guessing, and, you, and I agree with what you said, where ultimately when it was done, we got a better product. But had we not started seeing that busting up there in the beginning, we would have gotten those streets covered without the added expense of, of the patching. Is that a fair assessment? Um, in most cases, I do not agree with that. So, so cases, you would have came to the table and said, you know what, we just uh, we just completely disagree. We we even though the contract says get this done within five days, we just feel like this isn't sound, and and we think that we need to be patching all of these spots in Divide Street. Um, I I guess I would have a presentation I'd like to give you to show you where we stand on it, if you want to take the time to listen to that. Well, that's that, that's why we're here today. I want, mm -hmm. I want to be more educated, but uh, I guess when all is said and done, from from my standpoint, I think there's there's a, a common ground we can come to. I don't think that common ground is $189,000, but but I but I think it's 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 more than $11,006. Go ahead, I'll yes. let the to see what I have oh, yeah. Please, Trevor. Okay. Um, you know, first of all, we, we fully understand that um, we are uh, have a contract with, with you folks. So the issues and the things that are going to come up are not between Mayo Construction and more engineering. Uh, you have a contract with them. Yeah. You have contractual obligations with them. They have a job to do. Um, you have a contract with us and we have a job to do. So the things I'm going to bring up and the issues, it, it's not between us and more engineering because it's it's what's going to happen between you and mm -hmm. us and whatever you decide to do between the owner and the engineer is up to you guys. That, that, that's entirely up to you guys. So I'm going to address how, how the situation and contract is between us and you in this situation. Um, I, I have some handouts for you, and I think I'd like to start with um, our initial schedule here. And, and I know Jared had referred to this um, the other night. But based on our uh, initial schedule, um, this was presented at the pre-job on May 3rd. We showed that the milling would start on June 4th and be completed on June 27th. That's what we showed for our milling schedule at that time. And we showed the paving to start on June 20th and be done on July 13th. See that on the schedule there. So that that's that was our original plan. That was our original proposal. That's how we looked at trying to do this project. Now, for a number of reasons, whether it be weather delays or whatever, we actually started mailing on June 11th. It's actually a week later than what the schedule shows. It was seven days later when we started mailing. We started paving on July 2nd, Monday, July 2nd. So that was actually 12 days, 11 days later than what our schedule showed. Okay. Now we continued to mill straight through and we continued to pave straight through. So the milling was off by seven days and the paving was off by 11 days. So we're really only about four days apart there from what our original plan was. So I, did, I just want to make it clear that this is how, how we originally planned it. That's what we looked at doing. We were fairly close on schedule, really. 
then each time we had a weekly meeting to update. Yeah, did you guys did you guys get a copy of this? Yeah, we this did. Yeah. 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 pretty job. We kind of laid this out in the house, discussion that we had. So, um, and and the reason being, we've talked about this a little bit, but in order to get all those streets milled and get them prepped and get them ready to pave. Takes about three times as long to mill and prep the street as it does to pave it. So you got to be kind of ahead of the schedule, especially the way we had planned on paving it with multiple pavers and all being in there at the same time and try to get covered up as fast as we could. Okay. Um, so that that's our that was our in original schedule that we laid out and talked about. Then we have the weekly meetings where each time we talk about what our schedule, what we're going to do the next week or two. And all along there, I guess we didn't try to say we're not going to follow the spec, but this is the way we're going to do it to get it done fast and efficiently for the betterment of people, for the betterment of the project, everything. So we had no intentions of opening things up letting them fall apart so we can incur extra costs to do it because patching sucks. We sure. Like to do it. So that was never our original intent. Now at the weekly meetings we brought up um, and at the pre-job a few occasions that we were concerned about the two inch milling depth and the four inch milling depth. And and Ted's got you know excerpts from those meetings and his notes of bringing that up and talking about it. And I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was brought up on several occasions that we were concerned about if taking two inches off those streets, full depth was a smart thing to do. Do you have the specific dates? And I only ask that because I spent my night last night watching the weekly meeting videos. And I started back in June, the earliest dates that we had them on this site that we have there. And right. I heard a lot of conversation and I wasn't hearing that conversation. So there, there were just points that were brought up during the meetings on uh, May 17th. I discussed it with Ben Mix. Okay. Um, I didn't have a May 17th meeting. So May that's when we were tearing out the curb. Yep. Our, I our superintendent was saying, you know, as we tore out our curb, he said, this mix is only two inches beside the curb. What's it like to the rest of these streets? Uh, we had, uh, May 24th, same So that was a comment. It wasn't a, we should look at doing something different here. It was, it just, was a it was comment just, that we were concerned because our street thickness is, is thin. More of what we would call a warning. Because as I mentioned to you before, all the jobs we've bid and built, we haven't seen this two inch mail full depth and four inch mail across the whole street and really concerned about whether what's there underneath there can handle it. I mean, we were concerned about that from the very beginning, from the get-go, and we brought it up many times. And, and, and just understand that, you know, as as board members that maybe sat in the meeting and stuff, if you if you made a statement, you know, it's it's two inches thick here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, curious how thick it is elsewhere there. If it if it's voiced like that, that's where I think the question is being asked: Is that really saying they were? We're really concerned on this, and we think you guys, you know, I don't know. It, you would think the discussion would then go down the path of, if we're really concerned on this, what do we got to do different with our schedule to, to be able to account for this? Otherwise, it's all going to crumble away or something. Well, we, we didn't feel that it really had as much of an impact on our schedule as should we be looking at a different design. Should we be doing something different with these streets than the way the plans are laid out? And that, that was our biggest was that concern. specific question asked? That um, wasn't brought up. Well, I think it was on the 31st when uh, I said, you know, these streets are thin. We have thin mix. We have, we're concerned about our subgrade strength. And I think that was when we had the, when Luke said, don't worry, we've done this lots of times. We've done lots of two inch and four inch mill and fills. And I said, we have not. So that's why we're, we have never done a two inch or a four inch mill and fill in town because we were very concerned about that having that strength. So so did the discussion then say maybe we should be blocking off some of these streets so that we can minimize traffic on there or well that's not really up to us. No but but clearly you can ask that, that, is that, that question. Is that Moore's decision? Well we we have a set of plans to follow and to build and design the what you've given us. 
good hit off of. And um, we try to flag things or say, predict things, especially when you start tearing into it and something doesn't look like you thought it would or should, you know. Um, so as far as at that point in time pointing any fingers, there was none of that. We, we didn't do that. We, we didn't go back and forth and they didn't do that and we didn't do that, but we brought up our concerns and were voicing warnings about that at that point. Okay. So then we got into the, the milling and we started uh, on the first couple of days we did the full depth stuff, but on the 13th we started the actual two inch milling on June 13th. Um, and, and I think uh, Luke um, alluded to this and we saw this too, but when we first started on some of those right away, uh, some of them that were falling apart underneath there, there was some obvious problems in some of those areas when we first started. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, I've given you a few pictures to look at here. Um, so the first one there is, that's a street that we mailed two inches off of. So you, you can see what that street looks like. And you can see that we're through the pavement and into the base. And there's no structural strength to the pavement left underneath that. So the question becomes is, should that be patched or should you pave over top of that or what should you do? But that's what, that's what it looked like after it was mailed two inches. And, and I know as we went into this project, we recognized that we might run into situations like this. This, mm -hmm. is, this is very evident right, right from the get-go. And I don't think there was ever any any contention that there wouldn't be a, a, an alternative plan to simply putting asphalt over it. There, there would have to be some form of patching, whether it was the digging down or, or doing the concrete, whatever the solution was, right. something else had to be done. That's very yeah. So, So at this point, they're looking at it, we're looking at it, this is what we have, we've done yep. the two inch milling, what needs to be done? Yep. And, and that's why I said, you know, some of this was evident and obvious right away. But we needed some direction on what are we supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. You know, what should happen? First of all, these areas need to be marked out. See what, how big they are, where they're at, that sort of thing. Um, not, none of them were marked out. Right but it seems, seems to me in our, in our meetings, both special meetings and our normally scheduled commission meetings, all along in this project, we were we were having the discussions that we we found these type of situations. We need you guys as a as a board to give us direction, uh, or, or at least understand that there's going to be adders to the project because we have to do this patching and stuff like that. So those we we saw and experienced and knew that that was happening right all along. Right. So we were at the point where here's we mailed something. Now what what should we do with it? Okay, and, and and it was brought up in the weekly meetings that this these areas are out there. Yep. And and Luke even agreed, you know, some of them right away is right behind the mail, they're obvious. So there's a series of pictures there. The second one shows an area along the curb where the, the asphalt's obviously breaking up, mm -hmm. crumbling apart next to the curb. Yep. You know, why is that? It's thin. You can see by the size, the thickness of it. It's an inch or less. And this looks like it's up in our probably S1 or S2 to so the curve. Yeah. What's that? Do you have extra copies on it? Yeah, you can have, have mine if you want. Yeah, I have one. This one's in Sunflower? So, so that's an area where, you know, an example, and, and I didn't print all the pictures we have, but I, just something to give you a visual. <laughs> sometimes that's worth more than. Oh. Yep. So the next picture is an area um, where the two inch milling had been done and when we got done milling it, the, that spot that you see in the middle there, that basically there was nothing there so we cleaned it all up and that's what we were left with. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes do you just pave over that or what do you do with that? But, but you can see that 
the amount of work that went into doing this wasn't just milling two inches and cleaning it up because you didn't have sound, hard asphalt underneath. The amount of work required to clean that up and fix this and get this ready for paving, very much more extensive than a normal two inch milling. Uh, the next picture is with our skid steer in there. And, and the, basically the skid steer is just peeling up the, the thin areas um, where there's nothing left there and trying to clean it up and, and get it ready for paving. Any idea what road this is on? Is this divide or? No. Not sure. So these are spattering of all over, all around. Um, the next one is a cul-de-sac, one of the cul-de-sacs down there where we're two inch milling. And look at, you can even see where all the cracking is mm -hmm. um, right in the middle there. All the chunks that came out of there, all the mess along the valley gutter. You know, that that's what we had to contend with there. That's some power improvement. That yeah, was bad. For, no, that, that was bad. For clean up and fixing. Okay, so the next one is, okay, we were actually in there paving. We started paving these because nothing had been decided. No areas had been marked. When we started paving, not one single patch area had been marked. Nothing. So we started paving this and we've got one lift on one side and look what you have on the other side. You know, that, that's our construction equipment going in there trying to pave it. And look at how thin that pavement is. The, those two pictures are the same. That one and the next one. But then there comes the question, how long was this left open? But, but there's thin pavement there. It's not going to hold up. It doesn't matter how long it's left open. It no. really doesn't. That's, that's what you've got underneath. So when you put right. two inches on top of it, that's what you're going to have for a finished product. It, it, it didn't erode with it. Pavement didn't go thinner over time. It, did, it didn't no, go it, away. It didn't disappear. But if it would have been paved over right away, there might not have been as much cracking, and then it wouldn't be, even though it's thin. It so what about out, out in this road out here? Mm -hmm. Do we do we dig this down too, or do we? The base was because we milled down and it was yeah. gravel underneath. Mm -hmm. The only and patch that we did on this road was on the other was end. The very yeah. intersection would be the southwest yeah. corner of Fifth and Second. Right. There was a small small area in there that looked like this and stuff. Right. Nice. When we milled out here, I mean this this is a very good example of what a good base looks like. Right. We drove loaded trucks across there, and that didn't flex at all. Right. Right. That base out there was rock solid. You know, when we went out and we our loop, our walk, that was hard. Mm -hmm. We had other stuff up on the other block that we looked at that still had two inches of connects on it that were flexing underneath the way of a pickup. Whereas this thing, we had we had loaded trucks with you know their 80,000, 90,000 pounds that that thing didn't move at all. So this had an excellent base on it. We weren't finding that on a lot of other streets. Yeah, the, the other streets didn't have a if they were all like this we gravel be. base. Yeah, and and the the that sort of thickness for that. It, that's not going to last or hold up, no matter if it's a day or ten days or two weeks. It's just too thin, paper thin. It's going to crumble. It's going to fall apart. And then you're going to have two inches of pavement on top of it that isn't going to last for very long. So then the last picture there shows it just that's just a visual of you know us putting some mix in it and actual patching and what that looks like. You know it's a patch. You know, but it's Small amount of quantity, large amount of labor, a lot of extra work, slow production stuff when it comes to the patching. There were 75 patches that we did around the town. Total of 75, some quite large. Those are the ones that we offered at D.com on the large ones. Um, the other ones were you know, quite a bit smaller. So why why is it like this? What, you know, what causes? Whose fault is this? It's what was there. It's what you have in town. That's what these areas are. It wasn't negligence on our part of waiting. It, most of this stuff showed up right away. Now, did they grow a little bit because it's thin and it fell apart? Yeah, probably from driving traffic on. But it was already thin and already going to fall fall apart. So it. It, it's indicative of what we found all over town. So the other examples of that are the four inch milled areas. 
What do we end up doing there? This discussion is not about forage field areas. Please, let's not. I, I let's can, not I can have a something. conversation with the council. I understand, but I want to point out that we are not talking about forage field areas. It, it's all, it's a whole picture. So if you want to understand the whole picture of what happened here, it is part of the discussion. You want to, you want me to proceed? Sure. So the four inch milled areas, nothing held up underneath. I shouldn't say nothing. A large portion of it didn't hold up underneath. There was nothing under there to hold it. So what do we do with it? Question came, what are we gonna do with this? It's soft, it's falling apart. We got all these streets we did four inch milling on. We can't just pave them the way they are. We sat down with you guys and with the engineer, your engineer, in good faith to come up with a good plan to fix those efficiently, fairly, quickly, and to make them good and strong. And, and we did that in good faith with you guys to fix all of that because that was a major, major problem. What did we come up with? There's a change order for cement treated base to the tune of $276,000. That was the change order. And that was approved by us. That was approved by you. We came up with the plan. We suggested, we got the pricing, we got somebody in the day after you approved it and started on it because it was holding up this whole project. There was $276,000. I don't know if that's what the final outcome was or if it actually grew from that and ended up being more on the last estimate. Okay. What does it say in there? After the asphalt was milled from these roadways, it became apparent that there were soft areas which needed to be addressed. Same thing we're seeing in the two inch milled areas. The strength that wasn't there underneath, wasn't there. Saw that in the four inch areas. Saw it in the two inch areas. What do we have in the areas that are set up to be chip sealed? We didn't do any work on them. You crack seal them and chip seal them. The crack sealing is double what the plans call for. Plans call for a 60,000 feet of crack sealing. We're at 126,000 feet. Why is that? The soundness of strength isn't there. The pavement is weaker than what they anticipated it to be. It, it's the whole picture. It's the whole town. We've seen it everywhere. So why would you think the two inch areas would be any different? So you're saying from the time that they estimated it would be 60,000 feet of tar. Crack sealing. Crack sealing. That we had 60,000 more feet cracked up. In I don't that time? I don't know how they arrived so. at their 60,000 feet. I don't think that's, I don't think. I'm not saying that either, Jerry. Okay. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how they arrived at their 60,000 feet. Okay. But that's what the plans called for. And I know our subcontractor did 126,000 feet to get it all done. But it's the whole picture of this is what the conditions were here in town. And, and it's part of the two inch milling. That's what happened. We have, I have another example back from your July 24th meeting. This is out of your minutes where Luke was talking about the shared use path out there along the highway and what to do with that. The original plan was to remove the asphalt and replace it at the same elevation. Based on underground conditions experienced on the streets, there are concerns that the base may not stand up to the equipment and will require additional working costs. You guys remember that conversation? That's we exactly. came no, but it was yes. based on, it, this says it was based on that the conditions aren't good underneath there. Just like we're seeing everywhere else. So what did we do? We came back with a proposal for you on what to do, some options on the shared use path. So we ground it up, left the milling in place. They agreed to, you agreed to, paved over top of it rather than get down into those poor base conditions. You know, why, you know why that discussion started happening? Because you guys didn't want to do the original way that we wanted. The concrete? Yeah. Which got us the job. Right? No. Right. Possibly. Yeah. Well, if you went with that concrete element, we wouldn't have got the job. Right? No. So, but it's just, it's showing of what actually you have here. And, and it, 
it's a pretty good case of the problems that we encountered all around town. Not just the four inch, not just the two inch, even the streets with the cracked ceiling, even on the bike path everywhere. That, that's what we ran into. Um, so we basically had a, an agreement with you or what we thought was an agreement to do this patching and to move forward to dig these areas out, put mix in them, and pave over them. We had given you a price to do that, $28.20 a ton over and above the bid price, the extra cost for patching because of the slowness and what it takes to do patching. The DOT spec for doing patching, which is the same spec that where the mailing comes from, is $31 a ton. But in good faith, we negotiated with you at 28.20. The spec, the contract that we have says 31. That's what patching is. But we negotiated it down for a better price for you guys, what I thought was fair. Um, the milling spec, I believe Jared brought this up at the meeting last time, of what the milling spec says. So I just made a copy for you. Highlighted in the yellow there, milling pavement surface. It says place the pavement overlay within five calendar days of milling the pavement surface. That's what it says. Doesn't say anything about who's responsible if you don't. Yes, it who pays for all that? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's what it says. And I'm not arguing with you. I'm talking with the council. That's what it says. You don't have the updated spec. I have the spec book right there. In my novel. So, so when, when, I, when I read this quoted statement, it says coordinate milling and paving operations so that no section of milled roadway has public or construction traffic operating on it for more than five days. If public or construction traffic operates on the milled surface for more than five days, repair the roadway as directed by the engineer at no additional cost to the department in, in parentheses city, end of, end of quote. Is that directly out of our contractual language? 2014. This is the supplemental specifications latest edition that was uh, applicable under the contract. Was, was, is this in our proposal? In our contract? Says, says is, is there specifications and supplemental specifications? That's in the, that was added in the supplemental specification that was in force when you guys signed the contract. It's not in the blue book, but it is in the supplementals. And and we're, we're, we should have access to those supplementals. It's right on the YouTube website. Okay. So, one of the things that um, I want to point out is we had that agreement for the patching to do it. Nothing got marked. Our guy went out there and said, we're out here paving. We've got we to gotta fix these areas. What are we going to do regularly, every day, every day with these guys waiting on what to do? And when it first came up, the first time was at a weekly meeting and Luke was gone. And he was gone at the next meeting. And we had to wait for him to come back to look at these areas to determine what we were going to do. And that's why I alluded to that we waited a week or longer in times for some answers. So, like I say, I spent spent my night watching video last night, mm -hmm. and and nowhere in those conversations did I did I hear a conversation come up to say we're we're still waiting for direction. Where you know, everything that you just said in that you know, with with Luke not being there and all that, I didn't hear any concerns or statements in those in the video of those meetings saying hey. We're still hanging out there, wondering what to do and stuff like that. I, I never heard any any conversations to, to the liking of that. Well, until those areas get marked for patching, we don't know what they should be. I never heard any conversations saying we're still waiting for, for these areas to get marked and stuff like that. And numerous times in the discussions in the video of these weekly construction meetings, I heard the statement that the question being asked, is there anything else of concern uh, from the city, from from you, it was it was a question asked around around the horn. So you're saying in the weekly meetings there was never any talk about 
what's going to happen with the patching. I didn't hear the, 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 the concerns with delays on, on anybody's part. I was hearing everybody saying, yep, yeah, everything's going good now. You know, there, there would be conversations about, you know, break, broken up curves or, you know, all these other probably, things. But probably the reason for that is because never along the way did we get told that we weren't going to get paid for this. So we were all done. Nobody Here's said something. anything to us about not getting paid. We, we, so had, we were all done. We had a conversation at our city commission meeting when we were in the process of approving some of the, the patching costs and everything like that, that there, we, were, we weren't going to take the time in the commission meeting to have the discussions that we were having here today. So we were taking care of you know, the bill payment part of it, but we, were, we, we left it wide open and that's in city commission meetings. Where well, on we estimate number three, like I mentioned, you paid for 1,104 ton patching on estimate three. And there was some patching in there that was contention at that time. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and there was some patching there that they that there was some contention about for whatever reason it not getting paid for at that time, but it was going to get resolved. But eleven hundred and four ton of it was paid for. I understand. There was no question. Nobody brought up anything about it. In in that very meeting when we approved that, we talked about that we weren't going to get into the details yeah. of of going back and forth on whether or not Extended periods of time cause more breakage or anything. Uh, we never heard that. No, nope, we never heard that about yeah, that being yeah. extended well, periods of time causing it. Me and me and me and I guess like Nancy were here mm -hmm. one meeting. I don't know in July or like something. I know that we brought up or, or not we, but I mean it was brought up in a meeting about how that I mean these 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 I mean my costs might be so part of. Your share. Well, I don't know when that meeting took place or exactly. We started paving on July 2nd. We started patching on July 3rd. This is when we did the walk around. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were actually patching yeah. on July 3rd. It was the first day we started patching. And we patched 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17 days of patching going on out there that we did patching work. And, and so uh, let's go back to the cement treated base. Well, quick change yeah. Did you? I didn't get the the emails. Apparently. Did you send out the emails of the of minutes of those weekly meetings we had those I Thursday? Just my notes. So I thought someone was going to send those. Send those out. Did anybody get those? I never sent any out. Okay. I just kept track of my notes from our from our meetings. Okay. Does it say I? I was at at least half or maybe a little more, and I I don't remember. <laughs> I have had a few confessions in my time, but I don't remember a lot of the discussion of we were so concerned about Luke being off for two weeks or we're waiting for days on end for responses. Well, that most of that I think I was in more meetings here than you might have been after, actually. Yeah, I didn't attend the weekly meetings because yeah. yeah. that was Ted's response. Because you keep saying at those meetings we talked about. Well, and, where, and where did you, was that in the notes somewhere? And, and I watched those meetings last like week with that. the intention paying very close attention to mm -hmm. to the issues at hand. And that and like I said, I watched them last night, so so it's fresh on my mind. So and were there any issues brought up that all this patching was done and it's the contractor's fault and he's responsible for it? Was that ever mentioned? There was yeah, discussions that we in were in those going, weekly meetings. Yeah, yeah. In in the latter latter ones here there was some discussion on that, and I. Well, we met. When when did we meet with you guys no, the first time? No, it was before that. Even in our walk around, we discussed a lot of patching and whose responsibility it was going to be to pay for those, because of basically the open, how long it was open, and and other issues. But yeah, there, there was discussion on that when we were. We never got told to us. You guys had those. A lot of the points that I brought up in our meetings were, were comments. They didn't lead to big conversations. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I brought up. My points of what we had, and people looked around the room, and if they had something to add, we they added it. But we didn't have a, a big conversation on, on every single point. It, it was these are very brief meetings. We lay the things out there. I understand, and and, and that and that's my point is that that I wasn't hearing what what you're alluding to tonight that we were so concerned on this. I, I didn't hear that flavor come up. Well, maybe in those maybe meetings. I maybe I uh, portrayed it wrong. We were out in the field paving and wanting to pave the streets and get these things paved 
but we had to deal with the patching in front of us while we were paving. And our paving yeah. folks had the frustration of where are we supposed to patch? Yeah. We got to get the patching done ahead of Fair the enough paving. there. That, but that's, that's that's the purpose of the of the, the the weekly construction meetings is to bring those things to to the decision making. Well, everybody meeting. knew they were out there. You guys, them, us. We all knew that these areas were out there. Like we diverse them up. Absolutely. No, no and then it had to be that. decided by a change order what was to be done with it. Correct. And that's and, and outside not, the scope of what and, we're supposed and, and to we're do. Not, we're not contesting that that there isn't some some validity to to some of the stuff here. What we're here to talk about today is is some of the the long exposed areas and stuff like that. Whether or not and because clearly if you if you're doing road construction out there, something that has that milling out, you're not going to leave a road like that. That's not designed for for long term traffic. Fair. Correct. And, and so the longer uh, uh, something like that is exposed, the more damage you're going to, to see to that. Even, even, areas, even areas that maybe prior to them getting crumbling and stuff like that might have been, well, okay. We fixed these in good faith for you guys. No question. We did. And, that, and, that's and we expected to get paid for it. We expected to get paid for it. And it wasn't until we were done. When all of a sudden this came to a head and says you're not going to get paid for it. No, it wasn't. No, 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 no it wasn't. Yeah. Brought up this council meeting. So um, the the other thing on this change order too that's quite interesting by the cement treated base change order, which was to to add the cement treatment. Um, on this change order, the the engineer deducted two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars for the asphalt savings off the job as a counterbalance to the additional cost for the cement treated base. So, and what happened here is there was contingencies built into the bid with the asphalt cement to help cover additional costs and to the tune of $255,000 built in for asphalt cement on the job. Can you explain that, Jared? Yeah, I can explain that. So we did this job and the contractors had the opportunity or option of bidding this with 20% wrap in it. But they didn't have to. We didn't know what. Yeah. We didn't know what we were going to get. So okay. when you bid, if someone else bid the job, or you bid it without using the wrap, right? It could have been a six percent AC content. So the, there's two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars savings to the project on oil for us using wrap material. That was put on the change order against the cement tree. Is the wrap material the stuff we had? This is what we took off the street. Okay, the, 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 the recycling. Basically the two inch milling. Basically the two inch milling. The good stuff that isn't all chunky. No. That's wrap, recycled asphalt pavement. That's what wrap is. Okay. But, is, but is the intent of that just basically saying we, we had this contingency built in there and we're now we're using some of that contingency in the form of some of that? I, I, no, when the, when the project is bid, we don't know exactly how he's going to bid. And they provided a mixed design for one of their sub-consultants, probably Midwest Destiny or Terracon or Braun or somebody, and they sampled their material and they said, based on this 25% wrap in our mix, we only need 3% asphalt content on this job, or 3.2 or whatever it is. So we paid for the actual amount of asphalt, con asphalt cement that's used. We don't know what that's going to be until the job is bid, because everybody's angry it could be different. So it's the kind of nice to know. The contract had 6%. And once we had the mixed design, as an incidental, not really related to the cement stabilized base, but as an incidental to try to continue to reflect the accuracy of the actual cost, we said, all right, they're not going to use all 6%. We're going to back it off to 3.5% three, three for contract quantities and release that money into the contingency to be used for other stuff. You agree? Yes. Yeah, my question is why couldn't it be used against the patching? It's way more money than what was incurred in the patching. Why is the decision made to use it against the cement treatment? Why not against the patching? Because as Jared Spurs said, we're here to talk about money. This is about the dollars. It isn't about that we did the work. It isn't about that the patching was done. There's a hundred and Eighty-nine thousand dollars worth of patching that we did out there. Well, why can't why can't the savings on that asphalt cement be used against the patching? 
Why does it need to go against a cement treated base? It's because we, Ted and I were standing here when this all came up and we were trying to figure out how to get this stuff paid for. And we looked at it and he said, here, you got the savings here and here. You can get this AC. Do the same thing with the patching. Could. Why not? Why? Because it doesn't, we have it doesn't have to, you know, what you're applying it against is not really, you know, there's it released additional funds. The additional funds help to offset additional costs in other things. You know, it doesn't, I don't, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be looking and saying, well, it should be used here against this or versus against that. Um, the, the issue for me is still, we're really only talking about the, some of the patching, not even all, just some of the patching. We haven't been told how much you are or aren't going to pay. And that's why we're that's why we're talking about that today. And I made the statement early on. I'm not looking for a deduct of 180 some thousand dollars here because it's clear to me, fixtures and in discussion throughout the whole project that immediately upon milling, we saw areas that we knew there had to be corrective action. We we talked about that since since. So the question is, who's going to make that decision and tell us what we're going to get paid? And that's what we're here to, to have, again, good faith conversation with one another. And, and what I, as a commissioner, want to understand on behalf of our citizens is, it just seems to me, not as an expert, but a road once milled down like that is not designed for, for continuous traffic on there for, for long periods of time before you go about making whatever kind of corrective actions, whether it's just simply paving over it or not. And I'm convinced that the longer it was open, you, you made the comment earlier that you start with a piece of damage like this here, you continue to drive over, it's going to expand. And I've seen good material that, that as, as you, you get down even to the, the good stuff, because you're now running on the edge of that good stuff. I just saw an asphalt project we did out at the gas plant. As soon as people started going over the edge that didn't have the dirt on that, it was good asphalt, but it's not really designed to be driven on like that. Well, I, I think these pictures show that it wasn't good. Well, the divide, that's why divide, we was, divide wasn't in terrible shape when we milled that out, was it? And that's so. That's no. that's yeah. the one. That's there, one there of the were, biggest. There were places that showed place spots. Yeah. Right. Yes. But by but by the time we got to the point where we were having full-blown discussions on, on doing this treatment to that street there, it was really starting to look very, very crappy all over the place. What I'm bringing up is two different things. When it shows deflection, when you drive across it, it may not be broken up and chunky and falling apart, but as you're driving across with not necessarily a heavy vehicle, and, and that road is rippling underneath, it's hard to see. you got to stop and you got to let that vehicle come by. You can see that pavement flex. And that'll happen, that'll hold that way for quite a while. But you get anything with any weight on it, boom, then it starts falling apart and it's breaking. And, and, but the, and, and the and strength I'm, of I'm not contesting anything you say there. All of this whole this whole conversation about the flexing and everything, I'm just hearing about recently. Again, I'm watching and listening for those key terms and stuff as I'm watching the videos of the weekly construction meetings. There again. I didn't hear conversations talking about this flexing and stuff until just in our last couple of discussions that we've been having here. Which is what I mean by soft. I, I understand what it means. Okay. From what I'm sorry I didn't put it in a term no. that, that no, made more sense. Okay. That, that, you know, when we're out there paving, we're walking along the paver on the highway or anywhere. No. And when that roadway is flexing underneath there, we know that that's... My, my biggest contention in this, in this whole discussion is that I feel as a taxpayer in this city that, that there were some of the streets that were left open because of them being left open longer it would seem to me that the damage became more extensive now one of the reasons why they were open longer is we had the issues with the cement treatment we had to deal with that we had to throw resources at that we had to get all that done and ready to pay that took time we had the patching that we did have to do which slowed our production down immensely, slowed us down immensely. Because patching, like I explained to these guys before, is usually about 30 ton an hour type work. Normal paving type stuff can be 100 to 150 ton an hour. So you have a record of what we patched each day and, and the quantities we put out and the mix and the days we were patching. 
our, our production was hugely down by a large margin. Not even close. But some of the patching could have been avoided if the streets were closed up earlier. And you have to agree with that. Um, some of, the, some no. of it. Not all of it. Maybe fringe areas of these same but, patch areas. But if they had the but, small but, little spot and it was open for 30 days, wasn't you have to concede that some of it worked. Wasn't the Biden mill that first? That was one of the first Pretty reasons. Close. I don't know the first. exact order. Pretty I don't close know the exact order. First one was on the salt. I have that. It was mailed off first. Um, first no, the divide wasn't mailed till 6:20, so the second week. We started on 6:13. Divide Street, the west dead end of Fayette Drive, was on 6:20. 6:20 is when the divide was mailed. Good plan. So, um, you know, we did all this stuff basically in good faith. That they, they want to use the DOT specs. You want to use our contract. In the contract. There's verbiage in there for change conditions and additional cost to the contractor. In fact, at the meeting the other night, the engineer brought up all these overruns and extra things that occurred. They got extra expenses and want to get paid for it. So do we. We have huge changes because of the cement treated base, because of all the extra concrete work that's done, the extra mix that's put out there that slowed us down. There's verbiage in the specs that allow us to file a claim and ask for payment for all of our extra items that we've done. Change in condition, change in the nature of the work. And that's the direction that you're forcing us into without going along with the patching that we did in good faith efforts. And if that's the choice you guys wanna make, that's a decision you wanna do, we can do that. It's not the male way of doing things. We'd like to negotiate it We'd like to work it out. We'd like to be fair. We think we've been more than fair all along. We were open and honest with our schedule and how we were going to go about doing this. We didn't veer very far from it. So we your didn't. negotiation was the 11,006. That was, that was your negotiation on this? Now the other night, yep. there, was, there was discussion about using the, uh, instead of paying the higher patching price for the areas, we simply pay the, the bid price of asphalt for the patching areas? Well, I, I made the comment that um, typically if there's some argument about whether something should be patched or not, is that, okay, the mix went in there, the asphalt's in there, so we'll pay for it, but we're not going to pay you the patching price to do that, which is additional $28.20 which is what we took out on the bigger areas. Um, but but right now, with where you guys stand on what you did on the last estimate, um, none of the removals paid for, none of the mix is paid for, and none of it's paid for as patch. It's what just is, completely- Where is the number 2,094 square yards? What is what is that equivalent? 2,094 tons. So, no, what is, I, I've got it right here. I know. Those, are, those are my, my numbers. Okay, that's, okay, that's tons. All right. So, 2,094 tons of patching is what we think about. That was, that yeah, was we had 2117, but we're only out. But and that's, that's just on the two inch mills. There was some other patching. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, that's, that's in its entirety? Yeah. Yeah. Great. That, that's yeah. all of the patching on the yeah. two inch mills okay. that we have. And, yeah. and, and suffice it to say that, that there was, a fair amount of the two inch that immediately upon stripping that down, it was evident that there was going to be the need for patching. Mm -hmm. Fair? A fair amount. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was. But, it, but at this point, to quantify what percent of that 2,094 tons of patching was was in those particular areas, we don't we don't have well, we kind of went through it once. We did. You kind of went through it all when yeah. I sat here with people, okay. with Nancy and Jerry, the first time, and and I left that meeting with the impression that the majority of it had all been justified, like seventy-five percent or more, based on you going through each street and each thing and how it came to be. Yeah, here's sixteen hundred. So I think what I can. I, I think it might be helpful just to go back through one more time real quick and I have take our points to make too, but you know, just, just as a quick 
overview of what we did. So there's 2,094 tons of patching that we had identified on the two-inch mill and overlay streets. There was other patching that was not associated with this. Again, it's not in this discussion. Of that, we've got 1,518 tons of patching that were patches that were done on streets that weren't re that weren't paved back in within five days. Just strictly following the numbers. So of that, there's 400 and some odd tons that there's just for one reason or another, there's no dispute over, and we've recommended payment on that, and you guys have paid for that. So we're already cut down the number. We're not talking about all the patching. We're only talking about the patching that was on two-inch mill overlay that wasn't done for some other reason or that was not identified immediately. Because the ones that we identified immediately, we took right off the top. We're not talking about those anymore. So it's not, we're not talking about everything. Now, of the 1,518 tons, which is a patch area of just over 6,800 square yards, that's what we're talking about. We're not saying that 100% that the, the contractor is 100% responsible. Not at all, as they've said as well. All we're asking is, is it 0% responsible? And I think that's the same question you guys are asking. Is there some responsibility on the part of the contractor because of the fact that some of these were not, and we're not saying that the pictures that he brought up, some of those, maybe they're in some of the areas that we've already paid for and are, aren't even questioning, Maybe if they aren't, maybe it's something that is part of that. It's it's that that answers in the middle somewhere. Yeah. That's it. I got a couple of points that I want to just make about what you guys talked about. I don't I don't recall any time where they were waiting a week or two weeks for any of the, the decisions to be made. Luke was in Hawaii. We talked to Luke on the telephone when he was in Hawaii. We made decisions very fast. And I think I kind of take offense to that. But maybe and we thought I think we made our decisions pretty fast I don't, too. I don't I don't I I disagree. How many, many of the areas did you mark? How many patch areas did you mark? We went, I went through How with, many did you mark? I went through with um, no. the space. No. No. Yeah, people was, people was in the marking. Well, who, way, who's who's way, who marked them? Myself and Pete. For how long? All of them. Two we days. Went, we went through and we started marking them up. Yeah, for, for two, two days. days. Okay. Days ago. Right. For two days. And then after that, he went ahead and marked them, and you came behind and checked them. Yeah, we, we checked yeah. them together. We, we came to a common agreement that said, yes, we feel this is what needs to be Shush. It, 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 is that not appropriate? Normally, the engineer would mark. But, they were, but if they mutually agreed, it sounds like they, they understood how they were working together in this situation, no? Well, we were pushing to get them done ahead of time so we could pay them. So the, the issue was... They needed to get patched before we could pave them. So if we couldn't go to a street to pave it, I mean, we paved a lot of streets in a short period of time. We had to have a plan the day before where we were going, which means that those areas had to be patched ahead so we know where to go to. So it was an inconvenience for us not having all that done and marked out and laid out from the get go. And those discussions were clear on those Thursday meetings. You said we can't we can't pave and stop, look at a patch together, decide if we're gonna tear it out while the milling or the pave machine sits there. That those are those are clear. So so to me, to me it sounds like a process was put into place then to 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 accommodate that so so nobody had to to wait. He, no, that wasn't a head. This was while we're paving. This this wasn't a head. This, this is while we're there paving. It, it wasn't all in advance. Most it was the day was, up. Or there, there, were, there were some areas though that actually did fall apart during paving while you guys were going. So it fell apart in front of the paver. So mm -hmm. those, I mean, those aren't avoidable. Those, those situations I'm not you can't do much more. Exactly. I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we, we sat there and, and said, you guys got to hold up, we got to go do this. I mean, there, was, there were times when we went and we did it, like you said, the day before. And we mark these patches out, and we came to a mutual agreement that says, "This is exactly what we feel needs to be patched. This is what we're going to mill. We measured it together, we marked it together, and that was what was decided on." Okay, so if you try to squeeze that all into a five-day window. How's that ever going to get done? 
because we had, like they pointed out, 30, 40 days at times to look at these mill streets, figure out what needs well, to be I, I guess I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm hearing here. First, I heard you say two days. Now I hear you saying five days. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not following the conversation. No, what I'm here. saying is, you go back to the spec that says you got to oh. pave it within five days. Gotcha. How, how are you going to do that when you've got these issues to deal with? And it's not very realistic, okay. is, right. is my point. Well, I, I just want to point out some of the things that I disagree with, and I just took some notes here. Uh, you started by talking about the schedule, and your schedule did change. You said the pre-con that the milling of two-inch overlay areas would not begin until just before the finishing the reconstruction areas. That changed. Um, and then the, the areas to get two-inch overlay were paid shortly after, so as not to allow much traffic on pavement to cause damage. Contractor plans to apply a light coat, attack coat, and mill surface to help hold it in place until overlay takes place. Um, so there, there were some slight changes to the schedule. Um, I, I disagree that we didn't site, change site conditions that will be valid because there was about 50 soil borings and you guys did subsequently do another 30 or 40 pavement cores yourselves. So you, you did know what you were getting, getting into it. and. We didn't get the 50 warnings. Your no, soil where's warnings. yours? You had those two? The where? Soil warnings? Soil warnings were done before bidding. You guys had access to those during bidding, yes. Where? Where? Did you ask for them? It's right in the specs as how to get a hold of the contract. Because if that's not true, then we're still saying they're, the they're in the contract. We are specification so what is that the soil warnings are available yet to request. So they, they were standard. Well, they, they, they obviously weren't very valid when you look at those pictures and see what was there after we well, melted. They're there. Well, so I, I, during, during our discussions, we all agreed that you could you could do a soil boring and then ten feet away, you do it again and again. Exactly. Soil. Oh, exactly. I'm just saying that they're, they're exactly. there's not going to be a case for change site conditions. That I don't believe. Um, we've done plenty of two inch mill and overlay projects. I've done them personally in, in Oaks and Pullman in the last five years. I know Luke's done lots of his career. Um, so I guess based on the, we, things changed and it's here. Again, I disagree that the patching was not done immediately. Um, just to support what you guys are saying, we all watched the patching grow and grow over time too. There is a specification, it did say five days. They're, they're bound to the specifications that are in the contract. You can't just pick and choose the ones you want to work with and the ones you don't want to work with. So they bid it based on the five days. Had it been a, a 21 days or a, a 42 days, they would have bid it differently. And everybody would have bid it differently. So that if you allow them to leave it open more, there is a little more risk. So it, it actually could, if we had, Written the specs so that there was a 21 day window or a 28 day window, we may have gotten better bid prices from people because they wouldn't have had to be right after each other doing this type of work. But there would have been more risk on the city from leaving those streets open longer. So I guess uh, I disagree with that point. And I guess just to confirm, you guys did speak at the city council meeting. And let them know, you put them on notice that a lot of patching was not going to be paid for. And that was, I believe, at the July council meeting. So, um, disagree with me if you want to, but um, those my are my arguments not with you. I know. You're working for them, and I'm yeah. working for them. I, I know. So, ultimately, he did lay out a scenario. Um, you can negotiate a fair amount with them. Um, ultimately, the city is paying the bills. So the process would be, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you guys can make a recommendation for payment if based on what you think is appropriate. And they can then, if they disagree, they can file a claim against you and, and say this is not fair. So ultimately, there is a, a city decision here. If you don't think the number is 189 and you think the number should be different, then um, they can either accept it or File the claim and say it's not fair. No. no. But that's where I'm at. You know, we, we had we were up and we did that uh, that pass from the north on the first street where the street was heaving. We dug down and built that out. 
uh, we were all standing up there, and Luke walked over to the edge of the asphalt that was still in place. He picked it up in his hand, did this, and it crumbled. I mean, this stuff was black pavement. It looked like red pavement. It fell apart. There was nothing there. Look at all the patches that were on that street. It goes all the way down. And only two of those patches are in color. That whole street was like that. That thing was soft. It was nasty. You know, and to just isolate out that, okay, this patch is okay, but this patch is not, when the whole street is under the same conditions, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think we did agree when we were standing out there looking at it before we even cut the patch open. It looked good. It had been there for a long time. It had been there for a long time. But you know, when that stuff's done by developers, you don't know what you're getting. But as soon as we cut into that, as soon as we disturb that crust, literally, I mean, I looked at them and I was like, so make the decision. We're not, we're not blaming. We're not going to include that area. Pay for it. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to say that yeah, we know there's that there's a lot of terrible spots that have to be there. It was tough out there. And we, as a board, on, on, on Monday night, we did say we don't want to band aid things, we want to do them right. And I think we got a product that's good, and we're not disputing that. You guys did a nice job. I heard from our community members over and over saying, What a nice job you guys are doing, you know, courteous, you know, traffic control, things like that. It's not, it's not Norm, normally when we run into these type of cases, um, your representative would tell you what they think is reasonable and fair, and then that would be on the estimate, and then if we had some argument, we'd come back to you and say, or, or converse with them one-on-one -on -one and say, why didn't you pay for this, or why didn't you pay for that? We don't know where you stand, because we were at 1104 on estimate number three, and in estimate number four, we went down to 600. We have no idea where you stand. That, that's, that's why we're flabbergasted by this whole thing. I mean, and, and you should probably get representation from your folks on what they think is fair. You hired them to be out there to monitor this and watch it and look at it. And what is that? And, and like Luke stood here and said, you know, it's somewhere between zero and 170,000. Well, yeah, but where? Where is that? And, and is that the council's responsibility to know what that number should be? No. I don't think so. You know, I I don't think so. As, as Dan has mentioned, 189 is not realistic. And $11,006 is far from, in my opinion, acceptable either. We do have some numbers that we've got written down. But you know, we all know that there's areas out there, there's patching. You know, if we brought it up right away, you know, may not have had a, a big conversation about it, but we did bring it up at these meetings several times that the areas are soft, the areas are thin, you know, letting you know that there's could be potential out there. Uh, we did talk about the patch and what are we gonna do when we get to these patches? You know, some of them were like, we have to review them on a patch by patch basis, but on some of them, we gotta move forward. We can't just stop progress and go. And we had those discussions, but we didn't get that comment that, oh, by the way, we're not paying for it until the estimate came out later that, okay, now we're not. Now there's this is your fault. What, what that was had, never discussed while we were out there doing that. What, what we had conversations on at the city commission meeting was that there was concern on, on some of these streets being left open so much longer and that we're not experts on it, but we, we feel there needs to be some discussions because it seemed that additional damage was occurring because of some of those being left open that long and that we weren't going to spend the time at the commission meeting to have the discussions and get into the weeds of that discussion uh, you know with the, the numerical stuff on, on monies and stuff like that, that that we would go ahead and we would talk about that at, at, at a later time. So part of our thing was just with, all, with everything we had going on and had to do and then once we started doing the patching, that slowed us down. That caused them to stay open even longer. And 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 that I don't believe was our was our fault. We didn't do that on purpose. We had to patch the ones before we could pay them. Why did you and that just takes time. Why did you guys change your schedule and mill the over mill the streets right away and not after the reconstruction? We did some of both at the same time. We were going back and forth. 
we didn't go and just mail all the two inch streets first. We right. went back and forth in and amongst them because it takes a long time to mail those streets, get them cleaned up, and get them ready to pay. So three times as long as it takes to pay. Them. So what you originally said you weren't going to mill until after you're done with the reconstruction areas, and change that. We did some reconstruction, so they were working on that, and we started milling two inch. And they were ready for the next reconstruction. We went and did that. And, and because your sub wanted to get out of town with his next job, you wanted to mill. He's everything. working for us. Right. That's entirely up to us and what we tell right. him to do. Right. Well, and that that that, that I, did I, not hear you say, I hear you say that, but but then in our conversation the other day, you said your your contractor left left town. And hadn't really told anybody about it and stuff like that. So I mean, well, that was the concrete guy, and, and they're, they're, they're not part of your. Yeah, they are. They are. But but what you have to realize is that the amount of, of the changes in all the extra concrete work that's added here, they they did other jobs and they have other contracts and they have other commitments. And they only have so many resources. And when stuff gets added to jobs, if they were on another job, that would slow them to get here. When they're here and stuff gets added, that slows them to get to the next one. That that's the main problem with the concrete guys. There's a there's just so much added extra stuff. They're struggling to get it all done because they have other contracts and other commitments as well. And if every job they have grows and gets bigger, it, you just can't get it all done. You mentioned that they should get a recommendation on a percentage of that, or that they should. Let you know where you stand. Would you entertain some type of record if, if it's not the hundred eighty nine thousand well, dollars? Do we have a choice? Right. You know, we, well, we, you have, we have to. Yeah. We have yes. to entertain whatever they tell us, and then decide what we want to do going forward. Okay. I think that, that's our choice. I think we've made points back and forth. We've said where we other the other person stands, and I think we're both right in some cases. And I think that we're to that point, unless you guys disagree. I, I agree with that statement. I'm I'm in a position now as, as a member of this council that I'm not comfortable with 189. I'm not com comfortable with 11,000. Am I equipped to to say throw the dart? Yeah, I, I I'm not comfortable making that decision. I would be looking maybe for for a more succinct recommendation that that, that we could work with and then and then portray that to you guys and. See if that's mutually agreeable, and, and if it's not mutually agreeable, then we, we, we maybe have further discussions to understand where we need to go from there. Okay. Well, there, you know, the I'm I'm totally understand what you're saying, and I totally agree with what you're saying. I, I feel like that we've made a lot of other good faith efforts on this project to cut the cost to help you guys, and and and. I feel like you, you're happy and willing to accept those things, but now this patching thing is, is our fault and our problem. But I feel like the city's made a lot of quick decisions and has spent a lot of money as well regarding the CSP yes. and a lot of the city has done Those a lot are of design well. issues, Jared. That, that, has, that doesn't have anything to do with us. We never questioned any of those prices. We didn't question any of the prices on a lot of things. The but but, but that, you are. You, you're, I mean, you're bringing up the, the, the fact that you, you did a lot of things in good faith. And, and I think equally, you know, for, for us, um, you know, coming in for emergency meetings and stuff so we can make quick decisions and stuff, we, we, we made sacrifices as well. We appreciate that. So, you know, so it, so it goes both ways. And we're not complaining about the workmanship or, 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 or the, the quality of the product that we're getting or anything like that. We're, we're watching out for, for our taxpayers and, and the, the, the city in general and making sure that, that we're making the best decisions on behalf of our constituency here. Right. And, and... So one of the just, things that goes into that is, you know, and we haven't sent any bills for extra work or extra things, but to clean up those areas and get those ready and do that patching is is really extensive. Um, you know, I mentioned to these guys in the meeting we had before that the mix over ran by 5,000 ton on the 
nice job. So, so let me let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. I, I've been involved in con construction out at the plant, different projects and stuff like that, and and there isn't there isn't an organization that hasn't come in and bid on a project expecting it to go without right. any problems. Correct. So so this isn't your first rodeo. You've been involved in projects, maybe not to this caliber in, in a city before, is what I've been hearing some comments made, but but certainly you're experienced in, in this type of work. And so clearly in your bidding process, you're expecting to see some of those unexpected. Correct. So, so, but, but so we I can't see them all. No, we can't see them all. I understand. And, and some of them end up being quite expensive where, where we would say, hey, this is a change and we feel Correct. like we're entitled to and, some and, more. And that's, and that's what, what I've seen in all of my experience yep. in construction. When it gets to that point, nobody is shy to, to bring a change order in to, to cover your costs for, for those added things. So, so that's what you suggest we should probably do then. I'm suggesting that if, I, I would be remiss to think that you guys didn't build some of that into your, your well, bid that you put Pretty tough bidding work right now out there in this. And, and that's the answer that I would expect to hear from, from any contractor that I'm I mean, you saw I'll take the numbers were between us and Mike River. That tells you right there how tough, how tight the bidding is, you know. And, and, and you know, back to your guys' decision to choose us, hopefully because of this patching, you don't feel like you made the wrong decision because we don't feel that way. And I think, I know Jerry talked to some of the other recommended places where we work and and one of the things we pride ourselves in is trying to negotiate these problems, try to be fair, try to work with it. Um, we're not the big corporate company that uh, would have brought in here today three attorneys. Because yeah. that's what would have happened with them. And, there, and there's, there, there's no ill feelings. I don't, I don't think anybody's sitting here thinking that, that, that you're not being cooperative. We just want to do what, what's best for our constituency here. We want to make the best educated decision here. and. And again, I think the, the issue at hand is that it's it's felt by me personally, I, I can't speak for the rest of these guys, that, that we've got conditions out there that, that were exacerbated because of the, 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 the extended time. Exactly. And I understand you ran into some of these other things that took time and everything like that, but before we even started running into into a lot of that patching stuff, we, we already at that point had some of these streets that were beginning to crumble more and more because they, they, they had been exposed for longer periods of time. I, I understand what you're saying, but if you think about that, you know, most of that two inch billing didn't start till the week of June 20th. Our asphalt plant was here on July 2nd. That's like 12 days. So we didn't intentionally go out and mail a bunch of stuff and try to hide and run away from it. That was not our intent from day one. Did some wait longer? Yes, they did because of the sequence of everything. Yeah, there's no arguing that. And, 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 and our point is that it, there, there's there's some, we feel there's there's some shared responsibility in that. Right. So, um, you know, the major cost into this work for us is, is the cost of the material and the oil that went into it. So our base um, bid would be to put that stuff down normally. So... You know, as far as what do you, what do we think is fair, or what do we think we could negotiate out? Mm -hmm. If there's some of those areas that you think are due to our extended time and not getting to them right away, and you don't feel like you should pay the extra patching price for those, um, I, I guess I can understand that from where you're coming from on why you think those occurred. Yes, but. But I'm, I go back to that uh, statement I made a couple times in that the asphalt itself is in the streets and it's to the better, betterment of your community and the benefit of your people. So payment for that material to be there, I feel like that made those streets better. It should last longer. You're getting a bang for your buck for that material to be there. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I'll support that, that there is benefit to that asphalt if they're worked in areas. I agree with them. So I, I like what I think I agree with what you're recommending there, what you're suggesting there. That maybe we 
look at batches and look at that quantity and that price and we can make a recommendation to the city as far as what that quantity and cost is and I guess you guys can decide if that's fair or not. And then that would be brought back, you'd bring us that for our next meeting. Now. I write a letter good. telling you what we, based on that, for instance, what that number would be, and then you guys can decide at the next meeting if that's fair. And I'll share it with Mayo so you know what the cost is. So if you dispute it, you can get the meeting. Well, I, I don't know if it has to be a meeting. I know you got to make a decision on your next pay estimate if you're going to approve it. Mm -hmm. And whatever you would decide on would be on there. Right. Any, any payment we get up to the $170,000, we are going to be happy with because we're, we're out that right now. So yeah. it's a matter of coming to final reconciliation at the end. And yeah. And, 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 and we want to be fair as well. Uh, in, in, in our mind, we want to make sure that that, that we're we're doing the right thing. So we're we're not looking to, to gouge and and again, there's there's no ill feelings here or anything like that. We just we just want to do what what we feel is is uh, is fair on this. So I just got a couple things, I guess. So then, so then, I, like last meeting. This dollar dollar amount was 100 and 100 and, 100 and I guess like 72. It's 189 minus the 10 percent contingencies that we're holding on everything. So that okay. was the confusion. Okay. We yeah. an okay. You're already you were already withholding 10 percent of it. So the whole project. Uh, but yeah, the overall okay. retained. Okay. So that's okay. the numbers come from. Okay. Yeah. So then, so then, so then, like based on I guess, you know, I guess. All I guess like patchwork. We're roughly at about I guess like 21, 21, 21, uh, 2100 tons. 20, it's just under 2100 tons of matching. So then, so then, so then, so then, like if we put a dollar like value on that like, per ton, we're at about like ninety dollars a ton. Is that right? It's, 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 it's like 50, 76, 20. 76, 20. When you take take the Unit price for the tonnage plus the unit price for the patching, which is a per ton as well. It's 76. Okay. Four, so $48 is our bid price for basic mix. Okay. We're paving on the streets for the two inch overlay for the base bid. And our we added 28.20 for patching cost. That's how you get to the 76.20. And that adder is because it's manual it's processing it's up and all that other yeah. stuff. Okay. Also, I guess my my guess my question to you, you know, you know, just as a like something to like consider is I mean I mean I mean what are your expenses on those patching, you know, you know, this you know, tar oil labor, you know, and then and then like give it to us on just your expenses, expenses and no, and no, no kind of, I guess. Overhead or problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so. um, the, the, the 7620, um, that's a hard one to answer. I guess you would have to take the people's labor and time and isolate every one of them and every piece of equipment to just doing patching to figure out what your actual costs are on it. You know, um, so to go back and say what was our actual cost, all of that would have had to been tracked separately, and we were doing that at the same time that we're paving. And this guy runs from here, and that guy runs to there, and the paver's sitting for a while. It's running for a while. And, and that's why in our one of our earlier chief <laughs> orders, when there was some patching, that we came up with the price of twenty-eight dollars and twenty cents a ton for patching, and it was justified, and they agreed to it because the DOT price for that, that is part of these same specs, is thirty-one dollars a ton. So we actually offered less than that, and so you can sometimes they, you know it's it's hard to. Okay, we're going to use the spec here, and we're not going to use it there. I mean, should have we negotiated a lower price for it when the spec clearly called out thirty-one dollars a ton? I 
man. That thirty-one dollars a ton is in a DOT, all DOT contracts. It's it's in case you in, incur those type of costs on that job, it's a non-negotiable cost that the DOT sets up. And, and if we run into that, that's what they're willing to pay. And so it's just a standard cost that's in DOT contracts. It's called the PS1 PS1 schedule. That answers your question as far as what their costs are for. No. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, well, we yeah, yeah, I mean, if we just yeah, did batching all day, I could tell you what that mm -hmm. price is based on the amount of tons they put out there. You okay, take our total costs, add up the material, the oil, the equipment, the labor, all of our costs, and divide that into however many tons they put out there that day, and I could tell you what the price per ton is. But I can tell you that the 2820 is is very fair. Um, actually, the DOT has two different rates. They have a machine place at $31 a ton, and they have a hand place at $48 a ton. And hand place would be, you know, skid steer, shovel, something that's not put in with a paver, which I don't know if we had too much of that. And typically what happens with that is it's like not even a ton because a ton of mix is a lot of material put in by hand. So it's kind of, that's kind of a neat point. There was some of that in these really small areas along the curb or whatever, but it ends up being such a small quantity, it's hardly worth even talking about. Can I, can I say, I, I've heard a lot of this, if you're looking at us to make a recommendation, um, come up with a dollar amount. I do think that we're gonna have to visit probably, but. Paying the looking at the square yardage of of the patches or the tonnage of the patches and the overage cost for the patches, you multiply those together, it's it's in the fifty nine thousand dollar range. So in lieu of a hundred and eighty nine thousand dollar deduct, something like a fifty nine thousand dollar um, deduct makes sense on paper. That's that's only I want to say that that's how I came up with it. How did you come up with that? Number? 2100 times 2820. So you're saying all 2100 ton, unless, none of it would be paid at patch. Unless it's 1700. I have to look at the numbers just to make sure. So there's some of that did come up initially. Um, so yes, I'll look at the exact numbers that came up after the five day window and times the 2820 overage fee. And then you paid the labor and material costs for things and it's it's donating some labor then. I know it's real money, but it's donating some real, it's donating labor then to do those those patches that went a lot slower. So I don't know if you consider that or not, but um, that's going to be, that's going to be our estimation in lieu of the $189,000. And it's hard to determine what areas were not just soft from the get go versus what was soft over time, or however you you know say it, but you know that one street. I mean, we had we were down to 600 ton that that you're saying was okay. First Avenue alone is 400 ton. You know the streets that were where the mix just fell apart. So I mean now we're up to 900, which is okay. You know, not 2100. I'm just and, and of the other of the other patches, it's very hard to go back now and say this was your fault. This was not. You know, how, how do you do that? Right. You know, when, as we're milling and as we're working out there, and that whole pavement is, and is doing that, and which is why I brought up those points, not as a discussion, but you know, we brought them up. We got some soft areas out there. We got some soft streets. We got some thin areas. We brought them up. We did talk about them. We knew we were going to have some patching going into this, and we dealt with them as we got to them. So rather than looking at it as 100% for some and 0% for the other, that's just how I come up with the number. And Basically, you'd be getting paid for about 70% of the batches, or of that 189,000. We can say you'd be deducting about 30% of that cost using the round numbers. So I don't know if you're in a position to say that sounds fair or doesn't, or if you want to think about it still or not. But what what I would say is, um, of the patching that was done, the 2100 ton. If you want to say, well, uh, you know, certain percentage of that broke up because it was longer. You know, um, a certain percentage of it was probably there right away. But what percentage of it do you think broke up because it was longer? Did this thing grow from here to here over that time period? So did it grow by 
did the patch grow by 10%? Did the patch grow by 25%? Or was was the entire patch never there? I don't think we want to do that though, because if you take a 10 by 10 patch, that's 100 square feet, and it turns into a 20 by 20 patch, that's four times as big. That, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, from from a patch area where you got a bad spot, if it sits longer, how much does it grow? Right. You don't know. And the no. Rain, the no. Traffic, but what, the... what 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 what's fair? What what do we feel is fair? I mean, did it grow by 25 percent? Because if it grew by 25 percent, then 25 percent of that 2100 ton, you would come to us and say. You know, it grew by 25%, so you're responsible for the patching on 25% of this 2100 ton. And then that comes up to about $11,000. Well, whatever, uh, what's 20, what's 20? If you're going by 20. 2100 times 0.25 is what, Jerry? That's 25. And then times the 2820. That's $14,805. 14, but and that's you would pay zero for those instead of just the overage. I guess that goes back to the question we were talking about before. Do you feel that you should pay nothing for some of those patches? Pay zero for them for getting the added benefit of getting new mix put in those holes and and filled up, do you feel like that you should pay nothing for those? If I looked at it from that way, from that scenario, I would say zero. But looking at it the other way, well, it, it's up to these guys. So your recommendation is I'll, to pay 70% of the, of the 189, 189 yep. which is about 59000 yep. It's about 59000 our deduct. Yeah. Rather than $189. 189 be about whatever that number is, pay for 70% of it. So if you took 2,100 ton times the 20, 20 price for patching, the overage for patching, that's $59,220. So basically, what you would be saying to me is we'll pay for that mix and that material, but we're not going to pay for any of the cost for patching on any of it. That, that's more or less what you'd be saying. Because there's $59,220 there that you'd be deducting, which is basically the overage for patching on 2100 ton. Yeah. Well, the board, we've got kind of a, a fairly solid. Uh, Figure from more. I have here 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 90 percent of the cost of the 189. We could sit here literally for a day and talk about this. We, we, we would like for it to be done, Jerry, so as we, would you. And so we would just like to be treated fairly so we can be done with it and move on to some better things. I, I, I do feel that not getting paid any patching is, is understand. probably not the fairest. I, I, I really don't feel that's the fairest. Mm -hmm. but, but we would like to resolve it and be done with it and move forward for everyone. So then I guess out of that, right. So then I guess so like out of that, I guess like twenty eight dollars a ton. So what's your labor? Labor, I guess. Labor, I guess. Is it half? Uh, typically, our, oh, our labor yeah. and our equipment on on traditional paving yeah. would run about half and half, yeah. but on patching, it's probably more like two thirds and a third. It's much more labor intensive, mm -hmm. less equipment intensive. 
if that answered your question. So I guess your your expenses though, mm -hmm. and that'd be like twenty eight dollars a ton, you know. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You're paying seventy six dollars a ton for the whole okay. work, yeah. which is yeah. the the overage to do patching. It's an extra twenty-eight dollars to do patch, and, and that's probably primarily labor as opposed to material. Labor, you're right. paying for the material yeah. forty dollars a ton. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So then I guess um, you know I guess that's not your that's not your exact I guess. Yeah, I would. Okay. You know I guess by cost you know I mean I mean there's got to be some some I guess like profit you know on that right so I mean. Yeah, typically you might have some profit on there. Um, you know, there's no profit on there, you're not going to be in business very right long. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I guess I would just, you know, I just like to pay you guys in material, in labor, you know, I mean, you know, because you did add value, you know, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there's no doubt, you know, you know, yes, there was some. So, well, so I guess increased damage, but I then, think to answer your question, you know, when there's extra work or added stuff, the 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 spec book doesn't come right out and say this is what you get, but it but it when it comes to force account and we can't come to terms on what something costs and you do it by force account, typically <clears throat> what the spec book allows is ten percent for profit. So th that would be that would be a round number. Um, I wish I had bid this job with 10% profit, but then we wouldn't be sitting here and you'd have hired somebody else because we'd have been the on guy. But that, that's what, on extra work and change order stuff, that's what we're entitled to is 10% profit. So on the 2820, that would be basically $2.80 a ton that could be attributed to profit. We're so, bidding jobs right now where we're down at like 5% profit. Zero. Zero for I mean, it's it's that tight right now. I mean, the market is not so. If we come in and we get every job ten percent profit, we never get any jobs. If somebody else comes in and they're bidding for twenty percent under us, how they're making it, I have no idea. But so I'm, just, I'm in agreement with Casey. I, I recognize the fact that that we got benefit because that that material is in there. It's it's going to make those particular streets last longer than they would have had we had we not gone down that particular path. Um, what I would like to propose, and I'll propose this in the form of a motion, is that we would we would kind of split the differences there um, to, to to capture, and and it's not it's not precise science by any means, um, but to to recognize the, the value, um, I would be making a motion that that we would be looking at a deduct of thirty seven thousand nine hundred and sixty nine dollars and twenty one cents. Which is about a 20% deduct off of the 189,846. So in effect, the, uh, the the payment then would be at 151,876 dollars and 82 cents. Okay. Thank you, Dad. I have a motion by Pillar. Second. Second by Stern. Discussion. Roll call. Keller? Aye. Stern? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Fulvenauer? Aye. Motion carried. So I guess that leaves it up to you guys then. Thank you guys. Thank you. Paul's going to court. We'll take care of the paperwork. You want us to revise that last estimate or it's already been processed? It's already been processed. Oh, okay. It's going to be on the next one then. So we'll make sure that you get paid for that. Okay, we have um, three other unresolved issues going on. Um, one was for the added concrete work at West River for the sidewalk and the curb that they've asked about after getting that done. And we can't get any response from our concrete guy. In fact, he called me trying to get us, trying to help us find some help to come in here and get done what he's got. And he, he has he, no way to take on any, any anymore. Okay. That's where he's at with that. Um, and that was added late. That was at that West Right, right. A week ago. Which we had our, because we're doing all the removals and everything, and our equipment is gone. Yeah. Right. So that's that's something that, you know, if we could do it, I'd find a way. If that changes in the future, we'll let you know. But right now, 
doesn't look very good. Um, we have given a price on putting concrete squares around manholes and gate valves. There was discussion about having that done on some of them in certain areas. I think that was limited pretty much to the areas where there was a somewhat of a significant mismatch between the final elevation of the asphalt and where the rings were at. Three of them. All in my, there was two of them that yeah. sat below, they're about two inches below. Yeah. Right. The asphalt so I system. guess we need to know if you want to go ahead with that so we can get that put together and have that done or not. Um, and then there's an issue that just came up with the drainage at second and fifth where there was an asphalt. I guess Ted can explain it better than I can. But. The existing drainage, I believe, there wasn't a valley gutter there, probably should have been, and there wasn't one added into the plans. You know, we went through and we paved it, didn't show one on the plans, and now it holds water back instead of draining across the road and stops there because there wasn't a valley gutter in the plans to be placed in there. And so they came up, you know, wondering us if we can come in and put one in. Second this that, that really narrow street. street. What's what's the issue there? Well, there was a, like an asphalt drainage way across. There was no valley gutter, and then that got cement treated on the street. And so then it got a normal street section through there. So it got a crown built back into it. There were no grades put down. Nobody recognized it, and so now it's got a crown in the street. So now the water can't drain across. So, so the, the, the problem, you know, you can put a valley gutter in there. A valley gutter can go in from one side to the other, a concrete one or an asphalt one or whatever you want it to do. The problem is the street like this, when you look down the street, has a crown in it, and you put the valley gutter in like this. Now, how do you get the crown of that street to match into that valley gutter? You got to go back 10, 15, 20 feet on either side of that, tear out that pavement. And now pave it back in, and you know where our asphalt plant is. It's not sitting in the yard anymore. <laughs> so, so, so the scope of the work changed on that line, right? That that street was scheduled for less extensive work, and it, it changed to a cement stabilized base. Yeah. So it was completely reconstructed. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't supposed to be significant changes there. So what I'm hearing you say is your sub. Put the subgrade or put the base back in, change the profile, and we didn't catch it. Um, the, the, it was never flagged or identified on the plans. The cement treatment was an add-on deal, it wasn't right. part of the original. Not, plan. Yeah, I just want to figure out what happened. So it changed, the scope of work changed, it changed the way it, it laid out. I put, if the valley gutter needs to get put in there, I would recommend that we put in the concrete valley gutter. That would be the, the best long term. Yeah, but yeah. somehow we got to patch that back there. Yeah, I agree. And is the water pass. backing up to the west then? It, it's just the northwest corner. There's a certain portion of fifth that goes back and it goes to the drain right by your house there. Mm -hmm. So that comes down, you get the stuff coming down the street, and it collects in that, that northwest corner. So the southwest side is actually, there's a portion that comes down to the west, but that actually curves around the corner and heads south. Now on the, uh, on the east side, the intersection southeast, it kind of breaks right there. So it's just that one northwest corner over there. So, so profile changed. I'm sorry, but I still think your subcontractor did change the profile. Had we blue topped it that way, it'd be no question. But, but that was, I think that was an original 400 million coming across there. So all the asphalt was coming off there regardless, and there was no belly better plan to go back in. Okay. So no way. I don't know that there was a whole lot of water to get into there. Anyway, it's not. It only holds water back for the It's only a little bit, but it's enough. So I think we need problem. to add a concrete belly better. We add that to the plan. Their, their big thing is the patching. We don't have to prove here much sure. more. But I guess in light of all this discussion of being as fair as possible, will you honor your patching price to? patch along the edge of it. I have to figure out how we're even going to get it done. Who's going to do it and what the cost is going to be. I'd have to get some prices from somebody else. Okay, well I'll just please keep in mind that we probably have to hire a Really? Yeah. Okay. Well I think we still got to get it done. We could do a con we could do concrete around the valley gunner as well. 
it just ends up being a little larger valley better in that case that may be cheaper so you're saying where he's talking about where you, there would be the need for patching to change the contour of the, the asphalt to the valley gutter, you would, in lieu of that, you would just expand your concrete out to, out to, to the, that point. The you're, you're talking, you're talking Instead of doing like a six-foot wide valley yeah, yeah. gutter, you'd probably have a 12 or 14-foot wide gutter. you have a big Los Angeles uh, right. drainage ditch. You'd yeah. probably tear off half that intersection to, to make that work after it's been paved. Well, you're going to have to go I, I your belly there, so into the street, and then yeah, the intersection. Let's take a look at it and see what it is. Well, I just wanted to bring it to your attention yeah. that we need to get this looked at and decided so we can line something up to get it on because it's going to be difficult. Is it we'll something try. that can wait until spring or next water summer? Makes it or, it or is it too much? The issue that will come with that is the water's going to back up in that corner, and it's going to go up into the ADA ramp right there. That's going to sit and freeze. Then you're risking people slipping and falling. And that's a big injury. I don't know if you guys have done any work with quality construction out of Bismarck. They did the uh, tractor supply parking lot here in town. They bought mix from us and paid that. They've done a few things, bought mix from us, and, and I think they're pretty reputable. And that's probably the avenue I would go with. See if I get them to come in. They, they don't have Davis Bacon labor. They got cheap labor, you know, something like that. They could put in much well, cheaper quality. than we could. Well, I think it's quality asphalt. Yeah. Quality. So, I mean, we'll, you have to figure out a scope for what you want us yeah. to do, and then we'll go get pricing and get it back to you. I just want to bring it up that hey, we got to get this done, yeah. get this bit late summer, fall somehow, because otherwise you're gonna have a problem there this winter and the spring yeah. with the water sitting there. We agree. We agree. We so, we gotta look at it. And, Draw it up and it'll seem like a lot because that, that street is only it's four, narrow, four it's four narrow, wide. So really that's narrow. why I'm saying you gotta come halfway, halfway into that street. And there's a I think there's a there's a map over there's in the middle of that street too. There's not as much crowd there as you think though. It's only twenty foot. But what, whatever you need well, we to drive know. across the now it's it's goofy right now. It's a big lump yeah. in there. Okay. It's supposed to start yeah. It's not supposed to be going fifty. It's fifteen through there. So, so is the, the, the misalignment with the covers up there on Divide Street, those couple that were marked that were are significantly below the asphalt, is that a, a result of the, uh, the, the base work that we put in there? Or what? It's a result of the, the old street being lower than okay. when we brought up our new By crown. actually making a crown on there the way that it should have been. It was right. higher. Okay. In general, well, not general, but in other instances like that, you, when you come across and you could build a road, you probably take those manholes off, or the manhole covers off, build your street, and then come back in and match your manholes to your street yes. instead of matching the street to the manholes. Because okay. if you try to match all the manholes so with your norm, then your yeah. ride's going to be like this, so, and that's kind of what we ended up with. So, so, so the solution here is you, you take the manhole out of there, and you're going you're gonna to cut it out, form it up, bring the concrete up to the asphalt level, and put the Put the the framing in there for that for the manhole cover and put it back in. Either that or do an adjusting ring, the insert and put asphalt over the top of it. Okay. Those are the two options available. You can either fill it in with asphalt. Whatever we do, we're adjusting the top of the right. casting. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can go at that. And then, yeah, we're only talking there's two or three. three on that that fill it in with concrete, or we can fill it in with I'm asphalt. I'm zooming around. The yeah, yeah, we look at concrete yeah. simply because we figure it's going to be easier at this point. We'll figure it out. And it might be, you know. The only so, thing that I so get leery on putting an asphalt on top of concrete mm -hmm. is you get a crack in that asphalt and the water gets in there, no mm -hmm. matter of time the asphalt tops off the concrete. Yes, it freezes. Me and the concrete is the answer on that. And it's going to be more available. Okay. And we just built a brand new thing there, so let's try to make it yeah. look there, there were a couple of those concrete squares that we took out, mm -hmm. and they were. They were shattered, sure. they were busted yep. all over the place. And, you know, some of those you'll see there there's nothing there now because that that's what happened. We took those off. And those actually blended pretty well the way they are. You know, just whether or not you want to still put take out the asphalt and, and tie the I there's like that's, one, that's one or two of them. Like one of them and that was the one on Diapolis yeah. divide that we had received emails on showing 
undermining it. So they took that concrete out prior to paving. Right. Yeah. No, no one that we put back in. So basically, it was just. And there's there's really no concern on leaving it like that, is there? On, on bringing that, it's all asphalt right up to the mantle right. cover, framing and stuff. Yeah, I'm just there's, saying you can go up there and you can drive that one, and that one ties in very nice. Yep, yep. It does. No question. I think it's just the circumstance of that particular mantle. Yeah. Is what the reason I say to put the concrete back in. Yeah. Maybe what the further we'll figure it out. Yeah. And you'll see other gate valves that you drive around town, the same thing, you know, yeah. the ones that are in the concrete. They're where they were. You know, we did change those and just so there are other spots where you got a, a bump when you drive across them because they weren't they were too low to start. The good news is that they're not gonna catch the uh plows. Mm -hmm. For what that's yeah. worth. We'll look at some of those because yeah. we might have to adjust them. If they're that low, we probably should adjust them up some. But I don't think this is that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see too many that were significantly below. Or those, those are two more than one. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Sure. Me and your. Thank you all. Thank you all. Yes.